Alright, what's going on guys? So I wanted to go over a couple things that I've actually fixed on the computer as well as the uh, issues that I've been having with it. Um, one of which was the LED uh, controller for the H100i. Um, as you can see I finally figured it out and got it working. Um, so basically with this I can, I'll show you down here, um, basically change the color of the uh, LED on the coarser label. Pink for you guys. Let's <laughs> um, get the really focus. It's kind of hard for this camera to pick it up just because it's, it's a low megapixel. Um, but I mean, like I said, I mean, you can make all different kinds of colors. Uh, it's bright green. Alright, go back down, you can go red. It looks kind of orange on my screen right now. Believe me, that's deep, 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 deep red. Um, so, I mean, there's all different kinds of colors you can make. You can make that's really dark red. Um, <laughs> kind of like the blue, though. Um, so, like I said, I mean, there's all different types of colors you can make. I kind of like the, I stick to the blue just because that's, that's going to be the color of my case. Um, or in my case, rather. I'm actually going to make that a little bit brighter blue to kind of sort of match the LEDs. So that's basically what I've been messing with. Um, the other thing too is I finally figured out how to bring up the H100 fans. So this is the controller for the uh, H100 and it all even showed me the water pump. The water pump's running at 22, uh, 12. The other fans are running at 748, 759. 1671, 1683. So, I mean, I can configure these and run them however I want them to. So, uh, like, for instance, I can group it to uh, whatever I want. Fan default mode, I'm actually going to put it in performance. So, I mean, you can hear the fan drastically increase to 2425. So, I mean, it really doesn't have to be in performance. Um, you know, I'm just going to start, you know, messing with them to kind of get everything running 100% just because I want the computer to run nice and cool really it just moves everything when you do that um, unfortunately like I said the only thing I don't like about this program right now is that when you do do that little configure thing uh, it does tend to just throw the, the things around wherever it wants it and personally it's a pain in the butt to set it all back up where I had it because I had it nice and evenly spaced um, alright there we go so that's the one fan cranked up turn that up it's already turned up That's already turned up. So I mean like basically you could just kind of play around with all the configurations on the fan. So I mean like for instance I can mess around with the fan configuration for you know the motherboard. I'm going to turn up the fan configuration over here as well. Because I've been trying to figure out all this myself and like I said I, I really didn't really know what I was doing too much until recently um, and like I said I, I just figured all this out where everything finally was and got everything working 100% um, unfortunately with the radon uh, fan temps you can't really mess with it too much um, like there's default mode <laughs> which just kind of puts it to the default um, this is more so controlled by the uh, what's it called the catalyst so that I'm not too concerned with. Um, the other components are all controlled by the uh, by the cooling unit. So, like I could put the pump into performance as well. Um, so that's that. And now it'll probably cool down the system a little bit. But right now, like the AMD AD, 
uh, the temperature is running at 65.5. Now this is a readoff from the actual, um, what's it called? From the CPU controller of the H100i. So this is the temperature readoff that it's getting from the copper where it's touching the thermal paste and everything right now. Um, this, however, is where it's actually touching the motherboard, like the pins itself over here. So right now it's at 30 degree, 36 degrees Celsius. The motherboard temperature is at 32 degrees Celsius, so it's only four degrees above uh, what that's saying. However, this is saying something a little bit different, just because this is giving the copper readout uh, where it's touching with thermal paste and stuff like that. So I'm wondering now if uh, actually I'm not getting too good of a uh, connection, which, like I said, it's going to be adjusted when I actually take out the uh, CPU and reconfigure everything to the new motherboard. Um, but I didn't even get into that. I am actually getting a new motherboard and uh, this is the reasons why. Um, so when I did a little research I actually pulled apart my or pulled up my computer um, and actually started looking into why I can't uh, do what I wanted to do with the RAM and it turns out where is it? Um, right here. The dual channel on this motherboard only goes to 1333. Now that doesn't really help me very much when I have 1600 megahertz uh, gaming RAM. Um, basically, I can't overclock it. I can't do anything. It's just set to 1333. And even when I had the 1600 megahertz uh, A data RAM in there, it was set to 1333 because that's what the motherboard is capable of doing. So long and the short of it, this is going to be the different one. Uh, I'm actually looking into, or I'm actually going to be buying uh, this right here, which is the F2 A85M Pro motherboard. Uh, it has basically one full and uh, PCIe slot. I was actually going to get the V Pro, but the V Pro, the, the only difference between the V Pro and the other one is it comes with one more extra PCI slot. But the only diff the only thing that I actually will do is uh, give me the ability to hook up my uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, adapter, which to be perfectly honest, you can't even hook up another uh, R9 270X to this PCI slot. And even when you, if you wanted to, you can't because of the fact that the uh, this PCI slot only is a 8-pin PCI slot, and it's the same on pretty much every single uh, A-series motherboard. Don't ask me why. I still don't understand it probably just an older model uh, CPU so it, it probably just doesn't configure and work correctly um, but long and the short of it I'm gonna put my R9 in this slot here uh, then I'm gonna put the Wi-Fi card here and I'm gonna look into either a uh, sound card or something along the lines that only needs the 8-pin uh, um, for the bottom slot I don't know what I'm going to look into yet. There's actually a, uh, I'm looking into a uh, SSD by Asus, um, which I'm not even going to get into yet. Um, but, like I said, the reason I'm upgrading the to this motherboard again is the F285M Pro, um, is because it has the ability to do all of this with the RAM. So that's going to help out a lot. It also has the ability to go up to 64 gigs, which again is a lot. I'm never going to get up to that. I'm just going to stay at the 24 gigs. I'm happy with that. It's been running perfectly fine. It's just, like I said, it's not running at its optimal capacity right now. And I can't overclock anything because this motherboard is locked. Um, now the other nice part about this motherboard is it does have the auto-tuning feature. So basically it reads everything that you have on the motherboard and auto-tunes everything. So I don't even have to really do anything, um, which is another nice feature. Um, it's basically built for the A10 series processors, which is another easy thing. Uh, the A series processor that I have actually has a built-in uh, Radeon graphics card um, built into it. So along the short of it, it also has the ability to... Uh, talk with the other GPU which I have and the other GPU uh, is the R9 270X which has the dual dispansion uh, parts to it so that will actually talk to my APU and basically those two will act together and instead of having two big graphics cards in my computer now I have those two working together on the same system in the same 
you know, bracket and everything will work 100%. For all I know, this, you know, this graphics card isn't even working properly. Um, and I don't even know if it is or isn't. I mean, I've seen a performance, you know, boost since installing it, but God knows if it's actually running 100%. Maybe running just 50% at this point. Um, so like I said, we're going to get this motherboard, install it. I don't know if I need a Windows disk, so if anybody can answer me on that. Um, I am looking into getting the Windows uh, Pro series of Windows 8.1, um, but I don't want to waste the money if I don't have to. So I'm looking into that, but I don't know if I actually, if I just get the motherboard, if I move over the CPU, the hard drive, and everything else, if I actually need to get a uh, Windows disk or not. If somebody can give me an answer on that before I do the purchase sometime tomorrow night, that would be awesome. Uh, as I do know, some some computer guys have been following me recently. But other than that, like I said, this is what I'm planning. Um, this is actually what I'm going to be ordering. Hold on one second. Look at my nice keyboard. <laughs> um, it's actually not so nice. It's kind of dirty right now. Um, hold on one second. So this is what I'm going to be ordering tomorrow. I'm actually going to be getting the two meters of uh, LED lights as well as I'm going to be getting the motherboard and the 8.1 Pro full version series uh, all tomorrow. Um, so like I said, if you guys can help me out, if I don't need to order this, I really don't want to just because it is a little bit expensive. It's about $180. Um, but, you know, like I said, if you guys can help me out and let me know if uh, I need this or don't need this by tomorrow night, uh, because I'm probably not going to be able to order it till late tomorrow night, probably around like 10, 11. Um, be a huge help for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, long in the short of it, like I said, I'm going to be getting this, I'm going to be getting that, and I'm going to be getting this. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, update video. And also, uh, when you install this, if you do get the H100i, the first time you install this to the uh, computer, it doesn't recognize that you actually installed, uh, you know, this this actual uh, the, the H100i. It recognizes that it's there on the motherboard, but it doesn't recognize that anything's actually running. Um, what you actually have to do is click on the Courser Link thing over here and reinstall. Uh, you may actually even have to go to the uh, Courser website and reinstall it from there as well, just because the ultimately it's just you know. There's just so much going on with it that it, it sometimes doesn't uh, read correctly. So, long and the short of it, go to the uh, Courser website. Um, let me see if I can pull it up for you and show exactly where it went and how it all of a sudden just started working. Um, where is it? Alright, hold on one second. I'm going to do it real fast for you guys, alright? Again, I'm all doing this with one hand, so you guys gotta get it, bear with me. Um, so basically, you're gonna go into here. You're gonna go to the Corsa website. You go to support. You're gonna go to downloads. All right. Click here, and then you click on Corsa link. Um, as soon as you click on this, I'm not gonna click on this because I've already downloaded it. But you click over here. You download it. It's the version 2.7.5339 uh, is the current version. And if you update that, which was updated on August 18, 2014, then you should be able to run the newest driver, and guess what? It'll actually work. Um, so like I said, right now I just you just watched me you know, fully crank this baby up, and um, I'm actually going to put you guys down here real quick. That's as easy as it is. That's with all the fans running at full tilt. Like I said, it's a quiet, quiet computer. I barely even hear it. Um, I hear my fan that's over here next to me more than I hear that. So, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video update. Um, I absolutely love this computer. Like I said, the only thing that has to go is the motherboard. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the update.